right? Mm -hmm. So before we do that, let's just double check the bow hand. Not bad. So let's drape the two middle fingers over a little bit more, right? Cool. Let's move it a little bit down. Great. So that's basically the kind of like the hand frame you want. Good. You want to keep that elbow nice and up like that. Very good. And we have it against the string. So let's make sure it's nice and straight. Good. If we hold our instrument a little bit more. There you go. Good. Right? And let's bring this down a little bit. Good. See how if you make your shoulder and arm frame a lot more square, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's even, right? Mm -hmm. We will on the up bow as we go up, bring the wrist up a little bit. But for the most part, everything is pretty perpendicular. So when you do your up and down bows, you definitely want to look in the mirror. And if anything's above or below, right, probably not a good idea, right? Because we want to keep it like this. With the exception if we're just changing to an E or G string. That's where you obviously change the levels, right? Okay. So a practice method I'd like to show you how to do is if we go to the wall. Let's uh, turn this over here. I'll demonstrate first, and then we'll give you a try at it, right? So here I am. Yay, right? So the tendency is that what we don't even realize is that when we do a down bow, we might move this way, right? And the bow might turn this way and become crooked, right? Um, the other thing is, is that if we do an up bow, we've brought our, our, our elbow in and our wrist too far up, creating a T-Rex that is also not good mm -hmm. for the hand, right? This is tension and this is not even and smooth bowing, right? So, but if we st stand up against the wall, right, you want to have your, your back, backbone up against the wall like this, right? And your, um, the back of your forearm, uh, I'm not sorry, your upper arm and your forearm like this, right? So this way, we've kind of created a nice square perpendicular to the wall. This way, so when I do a down bow, we've extended to that triangle or the valley, right? Mm -hmm. And if we go back on the up bow, so we're going to go to the square, now we have a nice square, right? And notice this way, um, well now we're up here, we can move the wrist up a little bit. And you'll notice if you tend to start uh, bringing your elbow in or T-Rexing, your arm and shoulder, the back of your arm and shoulder will remove itself from the wall. That's your checkpoint, right? That will tell you, some, it's like the red alert, something's not going right, right? So that's the whole point of standing up against the wall. And physically, you cannot make the bow crooked and move it back with your shoulder because the wall's in the way, right? Mm -hmm. So that way, it's actually preventing two things and really helping a straight bow, right? Because we want to focus on... Everything comes from the shoulder, goes into the forearm, and then it's followed by the wrist, right? Mm -hmm. You want that as a natural motion following. The motor's coming from the shoulder, right? So let's, let's have you up against the wall. And we're going to do some, and I'll play over here. And, okay, great. So let's have you up against the wall. Let's have your back, good. If you want to move over a little bit, great. And if you want to hold up your instrument a little bit more, great. Good. And let's try to do, so we're going to do a down bow on D, up bow on D, and then we're going to move over to the A string and do the same thing. Great. Um, just careful a little bit. You want to bring that. There you go. Good. All right, ready? Here we go. Ready, go. Good, now you're at the valley, now bring it back up. Great, good. And now, and see how your elbow rises a little bit on the up bow. Good, mm -hmm. that, that keeps everything even. Great, and your wrist follows with it. Let's go to the A string now, and let's go down. And up bow. Great. So the tending action is for the elbow to raise on the up bow and the wrist following with it. Good. So definitely work on that and it's it looks pretty good for now. Good. Um, also keep in mind that you want the bow, the, the wood of the bow, towards the fingerboard, right? We don't want it falling mm -hmm. backwards like this. Right. Great. So the other thing we're going to cover is basically string crossings, okay? So we have our, our degree angles, right? And so we move our elbow, right? So let's keep it out a little bit more. There you go, good. Notice how if you keep it out more at that square, at that 90 degree angle, you can literally just alternate your levels of your elbow for the, right, from the E to A to D to G. Good. So we're gonna do an up and, up and down for each string. 
and we're gonna change the angle of our elbow and our arm, right? Okay. Make sure you hold it up, right? Yeah, it's gonna make it a lot easier. Stick, I know it's a shoulder, the shoulder rest, rest right? Yeah. Great. Hand frame looks great. Um, right, you always just yeah. wanna have your fingers over the fingerboard. Good. Uh, less wrist up, more elbow up like that. There you go. Right, there so, you go. So we're right. starting on the G right now? Or? Yeah, so we're going to start on the G. Um, actually, no, let's try doing both. Let's have it up against the wall. We're practicing two things at once this way, right? Okay. Cool. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to cross each string, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, make sure um, the bow is perpendicular, and it's kind of how you hold it. I know it's really yeah. just the shoulder rest hindering you. Yeah. Okay? So good. Uh, make sure your wrist is a little bit lo lower. I know the tendency is to... Uh, there you go, good, yeah. right? Because we don't want to do that T-Rex, right? Okay, cool. So let's do the down bow, up bow, and then we're going to move to each string. Okay, ready? Here we go. Ready? Go. D. So that's some basic uh, bowing practicing that you always want to warm up with. Um, yeah, I'm telling you. That's yeah, cool. I wish it was a few. That, that, that shoulder rest, that would really help. Yeah. Um, you know what, as for now, you know what you could do? Let's switch shoulder rests so you just get the idea of it, yeah, how okay. it's supposed to feel. Because I can adjust easier than you can with this, right? You know, <laughs> with the playing. Um, so let's switch. Do I have this? I'm not used to this. Do, you, do, you, do I have this right right now? Or? Let me see one second. Okay. Yep, should be good. Okay. Go ahead and give it a try and put it on. Comfortable, right? Yeah. Very good. yeah. So, up, oh, watch, watch the wrist. Yeah. There you go, great. And so something I didn't address last time is that, yes, you want to keep your fingers comfortably over, right? So we kind of want to do um, the, the analogy uh, Dr. Harris had used was picking things off of the supermarket. Like if you take a can of soup or something and you take it, so let's, let's pretend with our left hand for a second if you want to just place down the instrument. So we're taking, taking a soup can off the shelf like this. Right? Great. We're taking it and let's turn it around and look at the nutrient facts of the label. Look at it like that, right? That's okay. the motion you want to do, right? Up, not, let's not twist, but a whole whole arm motion, right? Let's extend our arm. We got to extend the arm to the shelf, right? And let's bring it back, turn it around and look at the nutrient facts. That's how you want to do it. See how the arm is comfortably and the fingers are comfortably draping over yeah. rather than like, up, oh, twisting, up, oh, mm -hmm. like an acrobat, up. Oh, looking for something, okay. you know. So let's take that same approach with the instrument, right? So let's bring our, our arm out before you before you even bring it to the fingerboard. Let's bring it out, right? Oh, okay. So bring it out, and let's bring it around. Right? Much better, right? So just make sure that you want to keep your fingers a little bit curled, right? You want to keep it curled. There you go. Good. That's how you want to do it. And, and it seems like uh, the shoulder rest is giving you a little bit of a hard time. It's all right. Oh, as this one's dropping, I'll just use it without. Um, okay, so let's review. Um, so we went over some more. Is this more... not good, the shoulder rest right now? Or, uh... Uh, I, I guess you just need to find a really comfortable height adjustment for yourself. Yeah. You know, that's something you really have to uh, work with. Um, definitely talk to Docker about that. But okay, for now, um, it's not bad, very good. So. 90 degree angle. So we went over the bow, how to hold it, uh, the the arm distribution and position of everything. So let's go over a little bit of the left hand now. Um, we have uh, the open strings G, D, A, and E, right? Mm -hmm. And we understand that uh, G to A is your first finger. That's the whole step, right? So let's try that. So. Great. And then A to B is another whole step, so that's one to two. Now what's in now? Are we gonna go from two to four or two to three? Two to three. Right, and why is that? Half step. 
half step, right? We have the B and C. Great. So let's do that. Great. Let's cross the string to the next, the fifth of the scale, right? The D. sharp to G. Great. And I think, honestly, more open string practice will really develop a more yeah. comfortable uh, perpendicular and not crashing into other strings. I think that's just a separate practice yeah. you need to, like, you know, have the muscle memory and internalize. Yeah. That will come with time, definitely with the open strings. Mm -hmm. Great. So let's try, um, since it's going to be part of the piece you'll be working on for homework, let's try an A scale. Uh, starting on the A string, right? So now we have the same finger pattern, but we're going to have start on A. We have the A, the A B, C sharp, mm -hmm. D, open to open E, fourth string, first finger on F sharp, G sharp, A, right? So let's try an A scale. Let's do half notes. One, two, three, four. Exception of the uh, hand frame and holding the bow, definitely something you have to work on with just draping it over and keep it. See, that yeah, looks good. Yeah. Before it was getting more tense. Mm -hmm. Your bow arm was very good though, so that okay. was very good to keep um, keep working on. Um, very good. So let's try um, let's try a minor scale. Um, let's try on the open G string, right? So if we had the whole step between A and B, first and second what's going to change here? Uh, one and two are going to be closer. Right, so we're going to have that half step there. Right, so let's start on open G. So Very close, up, oh, see it's a little too far away. So just how it was close your second finger and your third finger were, they were touching, right? And yeah. sometimes even pushing out of the way. Same applies for the first and second finger. Right. Two different fingers, but they're very close in the relationship. So let's try the open again. Ready? Yep. So. Very close too. Whole step for the three. Great. Open D. Now, if we were, now we're kind of playing a yeah, melodic so minor. No, 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 that's fine. We're playing, <laughs> right, so we're doing a melodic minor, so it's going to be the E natural, right? To the F sharp, right? G. Now coming back down, we had so going up, we had la ti do, right? Yeah. So now we got to go back the half step, right? So we had the close two and three. Now we're gonna have three and lower two for the F natural, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start on open G. Oh, so, sorry, top G. So, So as you noticed at the end, um, you have a lowered one mm -hmm. with the E flat, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. So I think we covered um, a lot of good basics today. Went over the bow arm and uh, the finger positions and whatnot. So definitely working on the major and minor scales. It's applicable to all the open strings, just like the major scales are. Uh, practicing against the door and going over the other things we discussed will really uh, create more of a foundation because then once you start looking at music, you can put two and two together. Mm -hmm. You see the passage and you'll say, oh, that is that finger pattern, right? So it's really getting comfortable with your geography, right? So definitely do study that more, look at the geography, you know, pull up online, um, you know, G string or D string, 
and the notes and it'll say like each half step and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's really just internalizing that will help. Okay. I mean, on that, good job. Thank you.